Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining our first session, our management session today, Introduction to Comets. And if you don't know what Comets are, shame on you. It's co-managed <laughs> IT services. Um, I will say I've known about co-managed for years. I've never heard about uh, Comets. I've never heard that term until I got a chance to meet Bob. And we will introduce him shortly. But first, we want to hear from our featured sponsor, Brian Johnson at Goes Into. Uh, Brian, how you doing, man? Great. Um yeah, so I'm Brian. I'm the CEO of Gozinta. Um, came out of an MSP myself. Actually, when seeing that I was uh, leading or helping lead this session, uh, I, I thought back and it's really realized, I, what do I know about co-managed? Oh, yeah, we did some co-managed IT in, in a form because we were doing um, management of people's ERC, ERP systems for, um, for them as a carve-out when they had an IT system. Um, but now... Um, I'm running Gozinta and we do products to try to help MSPs do their thing better. So um, Mobius Connect is our uh, accounting integration for ConnectWise Manage and uh, Tixt is our texting integration also for ConnectWise Manage, although we're also interested in hearing from people with other PSAs and ticketing systems. Um, so we know what, what systems to support next so you can get your text messages on your ticket and, and track your conversations with your customers. Um, and uh, with that, I want to hand it off to Dave Coles from Castle Rock Sky to start the conversation. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just quick introduction. I'm Dave Coles, uh, VP of Technology for Castle Rock Sky. Um, we kind of accidentally discovered that we were doing <laughs> co-managed, uh, and it's funny we uh, stumbled on it the same way. Bob uh, named it, and and I was like, oh, that's what we're doing. Um, I came out of the MSP world, spent a lot of years there, spent um, some time just doing consulting work, uh, and then started to see, you know, applications where I was able to come in and provide services on top of existing IT departments and in medium-sized companies. And then uh, it made sense to start kind of side leveraging uh, resources and, and, and uh, available tools. And then here we are. <laughs> So I'll hand it off to Corey for a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm Corey Eberly. I'm the VP of sales at Castle Rock Sky. Um, in the 90s, I was a computer reseller. Post 9-11, I became a recruiter, uh, technical recruiter. And then in the last five years, have pivoted into the MSP space. And kind of with what Bob has talked about and has written some books on is I saw the connection between the recruiting world and the MSP space where we were doing co-managed IT. Uh, and for, for Dave and I, we, we have a client, two or three actually, that uh, do co-managed IT. And I guess it depends on how you, you spell, uh, spin it, sell it. But I guess we've been doing that in one way, shape or form. And I've seen that for the last 15 years with recruiting and the MSP space. So that's us. That's that's pretty right. cool, and very proud to introduce the original crotchety old geek. That's not my words. That's what Bob refers to himself as. Um, those of you who have not met Bob Coppage, um, he's a regular on. Uh, first of all, he's a regular on everything MSP, the the bi week, uh, twice a week webinars. Um, that we do before that we we're doing daily and adding value to the conversations um you started a new series on linkedin as well uh right uh, and i saw you making breakfast the other day and uh that was very cool um he is not just a prolific speaker he's an author as well uh of the msp survival guide to co-manage it services and i don't want your job co-manage it services mm -hmm. uh is co-manage it services a right fit for you and a CEO survival guide to information technology. Uh, former CIO, IT director, and consultant. Uh, look at this. He's ready with props. How awesome is that? Um, and actually, oh, I don't have it with me. That would have been great if I would have been prepared. Um, I bought some books online, and I didn't realize Bob was the author of one of them. <laughs> so it was a survival guide um, uh, to co-manage IT. So I had bought it, and I realized after the fact, oh, I know this guy. So they, they, they have um, a pretty good return policy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I figured, no, I'm okay. using for scratch paper, scratch paper. That, that's, so. that's, a, that, that's the other alternative. Yeah. Bob, do you no, narrate the audiobook? 
What's that? <laughs> Does Bob narrate the audio book? Actually, the uh, the CEO Survival Guide to Information Technology, that audio book I just finished. Uh, it's posted <laughs> up. It should be an audible uh, within the next couple of weeks. I added also another about 30 minutes or so of additional content. And the downside is, yes, it's my voice. Uh, so <laughs> those of you who are paying, watching this now, that's one downside, but not my face. So it's not all bad. <laughs> so it's not all bad. And with that uh, fantastic introduction, if I do say so myself, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Coppage. Bob, what's this co-managed thing? Why, why do we care? So we're business owners, last I checked. So managed service provider, all that kind of fun stuff. And there's a concept of blue ocean versus red ocean uh, in terms of markets. Red ocean, you're competing. You're, you're going against the other MSPs. You're going after that traditional model of, we're going to replace uh, internal IT. It's an all or nothing kind of game for the most part. Uh, Blue Ocean is where there's not a lot of competition and the COMITS world uh, where that actually is an active partnership between both parties, it's a Blue Ocean opportunity uh, and it's working out great. And just like uh, these guys said, when I, I've spoken, you know, uh, uh, for the past two and a half years or so, two or three years on comments, and about a third to half of the MSPs go, oh, that's what we're doing. They've already done it. But the catch is they stumbled into the opportunities. They stumbled into the opportunities by engaging conversation with a client saying, hey, we can offer these resources. Here's a good match. Yay, let's partner together. My approach and the approach that we've been doing here at Simplex IT once we figured out that this is what was going on is we systematized it. So we're essentially able to say here we have our pure MSP process, which is your traditional one, but also we have this commits opportunity and we can go to market. We can go through a sales process. We can, and we can repeat it because if you, all you do is specialize co-manage relationships with clients, you're not going to have that scale and increase profitability by repeating it. Uh, both from a marketing and a sales and a delivery standpoint. So my concept of commits, and I certainly did not invent the, the co-managed concept, but I did, I will take uh, credit for the commits itself. Um, I just want one acronym, um, you know, before I die. That's all I ask. So uh, let me ask you, let yeah. me ask you something, um, you know, and, and Dave, I forget if Dave or Corey said this, but, you know, I know my MSP when we were in the MSP, we we're absolute, absolute didn't co manage. I loved it. Um, you know, Corey and Dave mentioned, oh yeah, we, we realized that after the fact we've been doing co managed. You know, it wasn't a <laughs> it was an intentional thing. Um, do you find that often? Do you find MSPs are are doing co managed in some way, shape, or form? They just don't have that process. They haven't identified everything and how to Absolutely. best leverage it. Absolutely. I would say at this point, more than half of MSPs have some form of co-managed and it takes the form of either a silo relationship where the MSP mm -hmm. is handling this and those guys are handling that, which often is the, we'll do the firewalls, you do everything else. We'll do the backups, you do everything else. We'll do the security, you do everything else. We'll do the help desk, whatever. Uh, or it could be a specialization, uh, we'll, we're high level SQL, whatever but it, it's that siloed organization. The other one uh, is the, the infamous monitoring only. Uh, and the monitoring only was a big push about four or five years ago. That's how you get your foot in the door. And yeah. every company I talk to, not MSPs, but clients who I talk to or potential clients who used to have a monitoring agreement, there was a huge disconnect between the monitoring and the value it brought to the clients or to the internal IT people where there wasn't, you know, we would get these alerts, but we had no idea what they meant. And we'd ask so, the MSP what it meant and they'd want to charge us or something along those lines. So I'll, I'll take it. You're not a huge fan of the monitoring only. I've never been a huge fan of that. Um, it, but it's a commodity. It's hard to show value, right? It's, it's yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, a cheap, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an escape. It's an easy in and easy out. Um, Corey, I'll pick on you first. Um, sure. Am I Matt Damon? Hold on. Who's Matt Damon? Kyle Jackson says Matt Damon joined. That's okay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Shit, my wife will like that. Kyle, you're my right? new favorite. Kyle, <laughs> check your meds. How do you like them awesome apples? So, so you know, uh, so yeah, go Matt, for it. Uh, I'll start calling. I'll just start calling you Matt. Um, so. Yeah. Which we call it. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, 
we've all, I, I did this. I, I mean, I did this run for about three months and I realized it was an epic failure. Have you done? Oh, Dave Coles is getting. Oh, no, Bob's got glasses. Matt. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That so, was fantastic. So, nice. Oh, uh, so. Th- this is going to be one of those sessions. It's going to be tough to keep it on the tracks. So I'm, I'm going to try. I'm just <laughs> as bad as everybody else. Apologies. Else's problem. So no, Thanks, no. But Corey. Um, yeah. So Corey, yeah. Monitoring only. Have you tried this? What's your takeaway from it? Yes and no. Here's here's what we've seen is everybody's got that baseline, and then the hybrid. Uh, I forget your guy from Forrester's name yesterday. Everything's a hybrid in between. Jay McBain. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of of getting into some type of co-managed IT. We have a person where we just manage uh, their Microsoft licensing. We already know we've got our foot in the door and we're going to get into a different level of that. We have another client where we just have somebody on site 20 hours a week. And that really came back to my my recruiting background where they're like, hey, can you go help us find somebody full time? And I'm like, we don't. They were telling us they don't need somebody full time. I'm like, well, why not just do it 20 hours a week? And that's when Dave and I were like, uh oh, this is called co-managed IT. We just didn't have the name for it. So there's just different levels in there, but doing just remote monitoring, no, we'll walk away from that. Absolutely. We'll let we'll let our competitors fall on their face for that one. No, thank you. Let them do it. It sounds like a good idea. It sounds like, yeah, we'll get the foot in the door. And then yeah, no, it doesn't happen. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Um yeah. Bob. Yeah, I I think that. You got to remember there there are short term goals and there's long term goals. Uh, if you're going to do something, whether it be project, so we don't do project work uh, for clients or, or for companies that don't have some kind of MRR agreement with us. The exception to that is if we really do think there's a great opportunity for it to mature into something more, but we're not going to be Pollyannish about it. We're going to put teeth into it and all of that kind of fun stuff. So I, I think that any tool we use as business owners, we have to we have to take seriously both the pros and the cons. I do think that a monitoring only agreement is is, is a dead end by itself. So unless yeah. there's truly a value add, I, I don't think it's a great shot. Now, one of the things we have done that has worked for us for monitoring only is a couple of clients, uh, and we haven't done this for a few years because the opportunity hasn't hasn't shown itself. Uh, we would have like infrastructure upgrades or the like, and we would add monitoring for the the network during the process of that of that uh, uh, of that project, and then have that there, show them the value, and then say, hey, do you want to keep it? Do you want to escalate? You know, increase the level of services, and that's worked for us for a couple of times. But if it didn't, we then would remove the monitor. So there was there was an end end to that game. Yeah, and that's and oh, yeah, there we go. And and Kelvin saying it, you know, upselling for yeah. monitoring only doesn't work. Absolutely, only looking for those monitoring only who are looking for cost, and, and that's the thing, right? We should be and it and it. I hate it because uh, Bob heard me go off on everything MSP the the other week, where I just I went into my my soapbox rant of you know forget about finding what works best for sales and marketing. Just do something, um, you know, and it, it, we've heard that over and over again. And on the value versus uh, cost approach, same thing. We keep saying over and over again, sell on your value, sell on your value, forget to sell on price. When you do monitoring only, you're selling on price. Uh, there, there's no way, you're not providing value. You can, you can put lipstick on a pig, but there's there's I, little value yeah. to that. Dave and, uh, Dave and I will tell you, we had a monitoring only client for five weeks. <laughs> and that was about four Wait, weeks we, too long. And when she said, and when she said, oh, I don't want to pay for this or that, can I go back to this person? Uh, which kind of goes into uh, something else Bob and Dave and I agree with is we don't do long-term contracts. So we let her out of that contract and we literally helped her down the road to the next person. Yep. And we were like, oh my God, what a disaster we averted by, uh, <laughs> sorry, so kicking I don't her wanna, to the curb as soon as possible. So I, I don't want to skip over that because that's kind of a thing. And it's not really co-managed, but uh, I want to take the opportunity that, that, yeah. that presented itself. Um, people are generally risk averse, right? People generally mm-hmm. want to have a long-term contract. Onboarding costs a lot of time and money. You know, planning costs time and money. We don't want a client that's going to be here month to month. But you just said we don't do long-term contracts. How do you how do you get past yep. that, that fear? Absolutely. That they're, oh, they're going to leave, you know? Good Lord, that's a different topic. Well, what, yeah. what we do is we actually do 
quarterly reviews. We actually do them quarterly. So we have to win their business every month, every quarter. We don't want to turn it into a, a, a cell phone or a cable TV contract. I understand the value of long-term contracts, but we just believe in if we're not winning your business every month and every quarter, then you should go down the street because we suck. So, and we'll help you. So, are you leveraging? Um, I'm just going to call them out there since they're a sponsor of the event. Are you leveraging lifecycle for your QBRs? No, we're using somebody else. So, I didn't want to go down that path. And I apologize. So I should probably reach out our to next them. Session, <laughs> yeah. Our, our next session will be MSPs that have made bad mistakes by not using lifecycle. And uh, Corey will be the yep. chief presenter there. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> we have a client meeting at 10 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, just. just just busting your chops a little bit. Uh, but seriously, though, um, if you have an established sales process, I don't even think Alex would disagree with this. Yeah, if you have Alex, I'm 100% on process. board with you. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Strategic you business know. reviews. And, and I got to tell you, yeah. that is a selling point for us. We're going to come in and do it quarterly. And yeah. like, oh, yeah, the other people do it. I'm like, really? When was your last one? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Oh man, um, sold and, and, done. and that's where life cycle helps out. If you haven't done it, live demo at four fifteen. Go talk to Alex. Um, okay, I'll kick it back to Bob it. though. Um, Bob, are you doing? Are, do you find there's value in co manage for doing these quarterly reviews? Are you doing that? Because I imagine there's a lot more communication when you have another chef in the kitchen, right? First of all, back off from the review standpoint. I mean, the answer to that a quick one is yes. But the real question is, what do you do to to stay sticky? And I just really regretted asking that question. Uh, but, you know, we want stickiness in terms of the relationship. And stickiness comes in the form of it's because of the fine print and it becomes because of the value. So when you look at everything that you do, everything should be aimed at increasing that value with the client. So absolutely. And we call them TBRs. Uh, and we actually have internal marketing campaigns where we have, we will reach out, we will bug them about when we're going to be talking next and yada, yada, yep. yada. So we will do that. We also do what we call QCTs, which we call quarterly client training. And those are quarterly events that we do uh, where we will do training about how employees of our clients, not just, not just comments, can use the technology to be better. So how to collaborate better with Office 365, how to protect your remote clients or, or remote users or like things along those lines so that we can, we can always say, Hey, please come to these things. And we used to do them in, in house. Now we do them, you know, uh, virtually. Uh, and then we've also got a team's channel that is specific for our co-managed our commits uh, techs, as well as we, we, we did one two day tra on site training session here for commits. Uh, I think in January, I can't remember when, and we've just, we haven't announced it yet, but we're going to be doing a uh, monthly commits tech training uh, online session or two hour session starting, I think, in September. Uh, that's basically so all of these are ways that we can say that we're constantly reinforcing the relationship, both tactically and strategically. Uh, and that and, and that's part of and the TBR, SBR, QBR, whatever BR it is. Uh, is absolutely part of that, but it's it's just a part of that. So yeah, you know, so you talked about red ocean versus blue ocean, and you know the competition versus you know replacing the internal IT versus working with them. Um, you know, I hate to say it, but our industry, um, you know, and I'm I'm going to use guys. This is not guys versus girls. This is guys is just as a placeholder, but IT guys are known for having a little bit of ego and a little bit of, uh, you know, about me. I'm better than this guy. <laughs> yeah. What in the hell so, are you talking about? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, we, I mean, with, without <laughs> cutting, you know, without mincing words, we always think the next IT guy is an idiot. Right. So how do you come in and how do you build that relationship? Cause you need the relationship in, in your blue ocean, right? You need to be able to effectively work with them. How do you get past those hurdles where they're like, this guy might want to take my job. Now he wants to work with me. But who is he? Yeah. Like, how do you get past that? Well, I'll tell you, the, the old school from recruiting for me was I'm not trying to take your job. I'm trying to help you do your job better. You, you need to hire a network engineer 
but I'll, I'll use Colorado numbers. If you hire a guy out here for $65,000, I can guarantee you in six to 12 months, another recruiting firm is going to try to snag him and put him in an oil and gas industry for another 20 grand. What you need is the consistency. So why spend the 65 grand, which is five grand a month? Why don't you do some type of a co-manage with us? It'll be two to three grand. There's a consistency there. That's how we sell it to the IT guy. For the guy, specifically with our one client, he's a desktop specialist, really in a CIO position, which I don't know how he did that, but whatever. We're, we're leveraging Dave to be the infrastructure guy. You do the hands-on piece, which is kind of backwards, but that's where the hybrid comes in. Um, we kind of tailor it to, to fit what they need. But then we're always coming back and telling the CFO or the CEO in a BR, I won't use the word letter Q, and somehow in the BR of here's the value add of what we've been doing. Sooner or later, they start seeing what's going on. And if they don't want to replace that guy, they just start handing more and more pieces of it over to us is what we've seen. Yeah. So, and to kind of follow up on that real quick, I'm going to jump in um, because there's a lot of these pieces and and Bob mentioned, you know, stickiness. And, and I, you know, I agree with, with Kelvin that you don't want to be tied into a bad, you know, marriage with it, with a customer. And, you know, it's like, you don't spend all your time in your marriage reminding your, your husband or wife <laughs> that they can't leave you. Right. Like <laughs> super duper. Yeah. Um, but you signed, you know, we got, yeah. here's, the marriage, here's the marriage license. <laughs> hey, we're, we're done. We're done. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the powerful thing for us in kind of finding the name for and, and, and approaching, uh, comets and co-managed and knowing what we were doing intentionally was a, a real shift in how we even just approached the people and the companies that we're talking to. Right. Cause we frequently lead with, um, this is all your all stuff. You guys own this stuff. This is your infrastructure. This is your IT stack. The, all the passwords belong to you. All of our notes that we'll ever make or any documentation that we ever have on you belongs to you. It's yours. Uh, and so approaching it from, you know, it, that comes across. It, it's not as siloed. It's not as we're coming in now to take your jobs and we're going to own your stuff. And if something goes down and we fix it, you're never going to know why and you're going to be held to that. You know, I mean, like just fostering this openness of, you know, it's month to month contracts. If it's not going to work out, it's okay. You will have everything that we've ever known about you handed off to whoever takes over. Like, just bringing it in from a, not not only am I not going to steal your job, I'm going to give you more stuff about your job than you've ever had before, and it's yours. It's not a favor. It's just, it belongs to you. Yeah. So, I'll add to that. It gets down to a ham and eggs breakfast. Uh, and actually, ah, one, of my, yeah. one, of my recent, one of my recent LinkedIn videos is on this, is there's a difference between involvement and commitment. Right. And when you're talking with a potential client about commits, you're talking to the CEO and you're talking to the IT person. The CEO is basically, it, it, it's basically, they're the chicken, they're involved, all right? And whereas uh, the IT person, they're the pig, they're committed as versus uh, ham and eggs, because it, it's one of those where, and the CEO may say, well, I have responsibility for the job. Yeah, that's true. But the IT person, it is their job. It is their livelihood. It is what they do 40 hours a week. And you're coming in, in potentially an adversarial situation. And not to go uh, do the book thing, uh, but in both my the, the MSP guide and also the I don't want your job, I talk about equally what are bad opportunities. If, if, the, if the internal IT person, whether they be a, C, a CIO level or a level one tech, does not recognize the fact that this only works through cooperation, it's going to fail and it's going to fail spectacularly. And similarly, same thing for the MSP. If the MSP doesn't recognize that this has this has to work well together, because I remember the first time I ever talked about comments uh, was at one of Robin Robbins things back in um, in eighteen, I think. And this guy came up at, and I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about trust. I'm talking about building. This guy comes up afterwards, and I have told this story so many times. If you're the guy, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> comes up afterwards and says, man, you are so fantastic. This is a great idea. Because then when that guy screws up, you're right there to take over his job. 
No. <laughs> Let's win together, not lose together. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a three-legged stool. And if, if management <laughs> fails, if internal IT fails, if the MSP fails, the stool topples. Period. Yeah, we actually just experienced that uh, late last year. We 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 had to walk away from, and I still it was it was the perfect customer, right? It was no. uh, right industry, right right size, right uh, right everything, uh, and we were perfectly set up. We had the ends, we knew the people, and uh, you know, the it, it's one of those potential customers that it's still because oh, today one. to this oh, day, yeah. my heart still hurts because their infrastructure was so sideways and so bad and the the users were having such a miserable time and the internal IT folks were not handling it yeah. uh, for a variety of reasons and Political we're like politics. look we don't yeah. need to replace anybody we we got the tool we can get you guys dialed in and spun up in 30 days it'll be like a whole different life for you guys uh, and you know and most of half the C team wanted it half of them deferred to uh, the uh, the head IT guy who had lateraled out of stock brokerage, uh, but uh, you know they we just weren't able to get through to them that you know if, in he, spite of all of our efforts that, like this of, is this yeah. is yeah this is not threatening. Um, he was afraid of getting it, it, exposed. It breaks my yeah. heart, but we had to just walk away from those guys and uh, one hundred percent. If if it's not them and us and us together, it, it's not going to work out. Yeah, we, we had a, a recent situation where we were asked to bid on a co-managed IT job. And we're the only ones in the area that I'm aware of that have a formal co it, it, All of our competition does pretty much the same thing. You know, the, they have it, but they're not exactly sure what it is. And we were brought in. We were one of the three finalists. And we, I talked with the IT guy for about an hour or so. And he was so proud of his setup and how he did it. And it was so not industry standard and it was <laughs> so all over the bloody place and it was so easy to fix. And he saw absolutely. So he wanted someone to come in and take over that layer of responsibility for that area and to do it his way. And I talked to him and, and I, you know, I've learned to ask leading questions that are essentially because will we be able to work together? Oh, sure we will, because you're going to do what I mean. And within about an hour, it was like we we ran from that. We basically said, now nah, take us out of consideration. And, so and give us was, a couple other questions that you ask, because I've got a couple that we ask, and it just – I want to see if they line up with what well, we Well, hold said. on real quick before we get into that. Yeah. I put two polls up on the in the oh, chat. Uh, so do the polls, guys, uh, asking who's doing QBRs or – even semi-annual, who's doing any kind of reviews um, and who's offering co-managed IT. Um, and one of the answers is yes, no, but I want to. So I'm curious to pull the audience, see what's happening. Uh, but go ahead. Yeah. Wh what are the questions, Bob? What so one of the questions is, do you have, is, is talk about their plans for the future. Mm -hmm. What, what are you, what are your plans right now? If we weren't involved, what are your plans in terms of, of improving or standardizing? all that kind of thing. And then what's your approach on best practices? So kind of from a, what are you doing with that organization? And then what are you doing with yourself as far as your own skills? And then I also will challenge them a couple of, on a couple of things, not huge issues, but why do you do it that way? I'm just curious. And what I want to hear is how open they are to adapting, how open they are to changing all of that. But you see what I'm saying? So I'm not asking adversarial questions. I'm more or less getting an idea for, for where they go or, or, or what their approach is. Right. I'll, I'll tell you the first question. What's our favorite okay. question, Corey? Yeah. Let me tell you, Dave. <laughs> tell us all. And it, looks, and it looks like you've got some whiskey buddies over here on the right on the chat. <laughs> I'm, when watching. We, when we, I'm watching. <laughs> when we walk in, I'll, I'll give the Reader's Digest version, but it really it starts off with, what are we doing here? Right. And I don't say it like that, but I, I'm like, you called us, we're here. What are we doing here? Cause they'll start with, Hey, tell us why we should go, you know, with, you know, you guys, what's going on. Do you, you know, what's your pricing this and that. And we're like, okay, stop. What are we doing here? And we will find the pain point and then we'll dig into that one deeper and deeper. And we really will just try to talk about two or three things. We will get into what you're talking about, Bob is, you know, the other thing I say is past, present, future. 
what happened, what's going on, where do you want to go? But but our best question that we've always asked is, what are we doing here? And all of a sudden, it's just like it's a counseling session for crying out loud. I get 20, <laughs> 20 minutes of this. Well, I know, Ray, you said to keep it PG-13. So someone will we're, say, this guy effed this up, and then this happened, and then this happened. And all of a sudden, now we're buddies. And I'm like, okay, well, we can help you here, here, and here, but we can't help you here. You guys right. have to own that. So we just start setting the playing field right from the get-go. The other thing, Bob, that we started doing is when we do our QBRs, if we're doing them over the phone because of COVID, we are recording them on Teams so I can go back and say, no, at minute 17, you said this, yeah. and that's why we're going to do this. So it's just it's it's all about accountability for us, but – that's our that's our leading question and it works. So Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm talking we we use that those discussion points as well. I'm talking specifically if I want to try to get a feel for whether that IT person is going to is open to change and open to working uh, with us. That's the, yeah. the that's that's what I was talking about as far as those questions. Yeah, as far as Daniel's question there on the right, what size clients are you seeing with co-managed? I'll tell you this. There's a 55 person client that we have. Uh, then there's also a, a there's also a 12 person client, so it just depends on what level of engagement we have on that co-managed side. So it's really, if you think about it, everything we do is really co-managed. But it, as far as we're getting different levels, it starts it starts going up. Probably every increment of 10 to 15 people is where we get a different level of engagement for us. And and my answer will be a little bit sneakier. Uh, when when an organization has an internal IT resource, why? What is the value that that person or those people are bringing to that internal organization? And how can you maximize that and maximize the, the skills that you bring that they can't have? All right. Uh, yeah. I will say yeah. that I think the upper, the higher the client, the potential client goes as far as commits goes, the more like so our version of commits is we share the tools. So we have the internal IT person is using the PSA, is using the RMM, is using all of our stuff. Okay. And that's that's the value. That's how we can we can uh, uh, duplicate it and expand on it. The problem is, is that the larger the client, the more likely they already have some of that stuff in turn, right. which each which eats into our value proposition. But it's I will say as far as, as far as a supporting standpoint, we can support roughly twice the size of what we norm, of what we would do for a full-sized IT, and I think most MSPs could probably do the same thing. So you can you can support an organization twice the maximum size if it was a commits organization. As far as the smallest one goes, it really depends on what the value is that their internal IT IT person is bringing versus what the value is you're bringing. Wow, I, yeah. I don't think I've heard a yeah, what he a said. wall between you two. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been trying right, my best to back out because you guys have been doing so well together. I just didn't want to to jump in here. Um, so I, 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 I do want to ask something. Yeah, I know my bar is very low. So, <laughs> you know, I, I do have two questions here. Um, when pitching co-managed, uh, Bob, um, how much – breakfast is required because uh, I've watched your LinkedIn videos and I see that if I understand this correctly, in order to understand co-managed, I need to be able to make bacon, eggs, and pancakes. So uh, how much breakfast is required to be able to do co-managed? Well, first of all, the pancakes are, are an add-on. Okay. Because pancakes are <laughs> flat fee. <laughs> I love that. Oh Although although it is a stackable resource, was so, was that a shorter that joke? It was <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so I will go back to uh, you know my thing is process documentation procedure that I, I beat on that like a harpy. Um, do you find yourself in co-managed? And this is an open question, to everybody. But do you guys find yourselves in co-managed um, augmenting because? organizations suck at documenting, right? Um, do you find yourselves being the one to lead that charge and say, no, no, we need to document these things. We're going to teach you how to do this and providing those procedures to them? Absolutely. Oh, my God. that That's one of the huge things. You take a look at all the things that we do, and for you to basically be able to go into a, a, the, the internal IT, what do you not have time to do? I don't have time to document. I don't have time to track warranties. I don't try have time to proceduralize. I don't have time to implement standards. I don't have time to evaluate these third-party tools. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. 
Well, what if we came in and this is gets back now? I want to be I want to stress this is our version of comets. Okay. You'll see if vendors are all over the place now, throwing the word co-managed out there, and then you ask what they are, and nobody, you know, it, it goes all over the place. But in our version of comets, we essentially lift up the internal IT folks, put all of our stamps, our software tools, methods, procedures give them access to that and training to, to use that and support that. That way it's done and we don't have to learn any new way of doing things because they're using the tools the same way we do. We can share our documentation using whatever tools or the like, uh, right. and they can create their own documentation to add onto it, uh, as well as us do configurations over on the PSA side or the RMM side to help them as well. Well, and I, just to jump in on that too, I think that getting back to just how you're approaching your customers and what that relationship is, you know, with, with the month to month contracts that we do, it's, it's, you know, I always say we're, 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 I'm trying to earn your business for the next 10 years. I'm not, I don't care about the next 12 months, right. you know, and that really hooks into that with um, moving back into, uh, we will always do, we will always give you advice that is good for your business. We're always going to help you find the right business decision that you guys need to make. There may be a time down the road where you outgrow us and I'm going to come to you and say, the right business decision for you to make is to move into a different provider or, you know, change, whatever that is. Uh, I, our goal and our role is to be the trusted advisor. And we have to make peace with the fact that there may be a day where the best advice I can give you to do the best thing for your business it doesn't involve me. Uh, we and did, we just you know, went through that last it. month. And and that's yeah. a huge part of the documentation process, right? That's a huge yeah. part of that. It's not my stuff. It's your stuff. We just, we're stewards. Uh, and there's certain things that we can't bend on that I have to have you do. You've got to have MFA turned on. I mean, you know, some of the, the <laughs> basics, uh, but you know, those customers, if they won't take that advice, then we don't, it, it's not a partnership and it's not a relationship and it's not yeah. us doing our best to make you grow because your growth is growth for us. Um, and yeah, these so are the guys who, if they leave of, you because you're you're expensive, they'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you, you heard it from Matt Damon uh, or Jason Bourne. Um, you, know, <laughs> you need to be. Able oh, to. I, I, I'm way more informant right now from COVID. <laughs> I'm I'm chunky. Well, you know, off season, right? Um, I was going to go contagion. <laughs> contagion. There you, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that brings in the the MFA conversation. I'll, I'll jump off that real quick. You know we're being asked in chat, you know, security, we've seen the Garmin stuff. Yeah. We've seen the, the other stuff in recent <laughs> history. Um, uh, Garmin's not our customer. I want to put that yeah, out there. Right no, that's Bob's customer. That's, that's no. Bob. <laughs> no, I, I am here to take your job now. <laughs> I, I won't put that on Bob. No, but like, seriously, though, like as an MSP, we take on a lot of liability. We take a lot on a lot of risk. We take on a lot of accountability, right? Um, and that's one of the reasons we don't like other chefs in the kitchen. We want to be able to own the whole thing because we can answer for the whole thing. You lose some of that when you're with co-managed. Um, do you find yourselves having to beat security into your co-managed clients, <laughs> right? And, and how do you get past that? Because everybody has opinions. Um, Has anybody had a customer that they didn't have to beat security into at all ever? I'm just throwing it out. No, there. That, that's the absolute Anyone, truth. Any customer? But, now, but so, these other customers didn't have admin access. These other customers didn't have technical knowledge to get oh, hurt, Jesus. to get in that's trouble. True. Um, you know. So, so let's let's talk two scenarios on this. Scenario number one. It's a pure MSP situation, or three scenarios. Scenario number one, it's a pure MSP situation, so it's you talking to management. It's the one we're used to. You have to have that discussion. You have to get them engaged, understanding security, yada, yada, yada. The second scenario is that there is an internal IT person, and they trust, there is already a trust factor there. The management trusts that person to a certain degree or another, or they wouldn't be there. And that person is on board with your needs for security. They get it, but they can't get management to listen to them. You just got yourself an ally. Mm -hmm. You've got somebody else who will help you in that discussion, who will help you in implementing that stuff because they get it, they understand it. So you're in a better position there. Now let's take the third. You have the internal IT person who does not give a hoot about security because they haven't been hacked yet. So it must be working that whole you know, and why renew antivirus? It's still installed. You know, that kind of fun stuff. In which case, that gets back to that whole, 
where's that trust? Is it a good fit? All that kind of fun, all that kind of fun. Science. So you need to make sure what type of scenario you've got. And then this also gets into the whole, how good are your tools? And one of the processes I'm starting to do is really to get into better evaluation of the, of the MSP vendors, as far as how good are your tools for commits because mm -hmm. of this exact situation, because it is poorly defined. It is poorly documented. Um, and, you know, if, if, if you have to, as we currently do to a certain degree, if you have to be dependent entirely on the paperwork of the, of the agreement, then it's just a question of you're in deep. It just may not be as deep. Yeah. So some so, of it has to do with tool evaluation. So in qualifying that, you know, let, let's take the opportunity we have since we have so many vendors in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, how do you qualify what's a good vendor? For, for that kind of relationship? I actually have, want. there's a, a Facebook video that I put on uh, in the comments. There's a co-managed IT services Facebook group has about 530 members or so. I did a video and I think I put it on YouTube as well that talks specifically about that. And there's about six or eight points. I wasn't listening when I made it, so I can't tell you. But there's about six or eight points uh, and a lot of it has to do with how much delegation you can do. Uh, a yeah. lot of it has to do with how much change management you can do. A lot of it has to do with, with the training. Uh, a lot of it, you, a lot of the training that's available is not available to clients. It's only available to the MSP. So you guys Very are cool. Dave, you have something you, to add to that? <laughs> no, I was just saying, <laughs> I, I, I pick them based on how many times they email me. Nice, Corey. Oh my God! <laughs> so it's, less, know, it's, not, it's less, not a bad method. The less, they, the less they email us, the higher up the <laughs> list they go. Well, plus the shirts. Don't. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys are having t-shirt withdrawal. Uh, oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a size larger now than I was when this. I, I need I need to go out to uh, yeah. get some t-shirts. I'm not. My shirts are smaller. That's what it is. <laughs> it's mediums. It's mediums. So yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're about 14 minutes uh, left on the on our hour. Um, I want to get you know, I see a lot of chats going on. Um, if there's anybody that that does co-manage today, um, there's there's anybody that does co-manage today. You want to come up and do video and you know or ask any questions live i mean we do have the crotchety old geek and uh you know we have uh, jason Bourne, and jason we're gonna have Bourne, to come up yeah. with a name for corey man um, but, please don't know. let sean pick it thanks yeah, right if sean picks it oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> God damn it, man, you know um but you know raise your hand in the chat and we'll be more than happy to to bring you on um, but we want to hear from you guys too. What challenges are you have with co-manage? What, what, uh, why haven't you gotten into co-manage? Now, I did see in the poll we're seeing what is 100% of you doing QBRs and 72% of you are doing co-managed and 18% no, but I want to, and 9% of you are sane and don't want to get into co-manage. Good for you. No, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, no, you can't be sane and be an MSP. It's not an option. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to come and join and, and give your perspective, definitely appreciate it. So, how do you, how do you find? Oh yeah, we will be sending shirts. Thank you, Heather. We will be sending shirts out um, with directions on how to make the heads and the arms fit in. But we'll make sure they're appropriately sized for COVID scenario. I would um, thought there'd be a great op opportunity for someone to create a beta T-shirt with like three <laughs> sleeves, writing in all the wrong places. <laughs> I'm just surprised we don't have. I'm surprised we don't have togas yet. No, no one's made a toga for the after uh, after oh. party. <laughs> nice. So um, to get this back on topic, though, but yeah, how do you find how do you find clients like that? How do you find clients? How do you find yeah, you know, absolutely good manage? Yeah, here's here's how you find it. You look for somebody that's looking for a desktop <laughs> support person on Indeed or Simply Hired. That's not a recruiting firm. Oh my God, don't call those yep. guys just from experience. Or you flip it around the other way and you look for people that are looking for a director of IT or infrastructure. Hey, you've already got a desktop guy. We'll, and then you just figure out which one you want to go after. So yeah. there there's was so a non, many. Yeah, there's three or four different angles. But I'll tell you, as the recruiter, if it's posted on LinkedIn, I already know that they've paid $195 to post that. So I know that they're pretty serious about figuring that out. Um, and, and a lot of these nine times out of 10 no idea. Salary. Yeah. They'll give yeah, you the salary these, requirements. Yeah. Now you know what you need to do to come in and beat it. Look, so, you guys are ready to spend $120,000 a year for a guy that is going to, you know, 
be there for 150 skill months. Sets, lack of because, resources. Yeah. Yeah. They just they just don't know the alternatives, right? They're like, we've got to have they don't an know what they guy. Don't know. We're gonna have yeah. to throw out hundred and twenty thousand dollars. The qualified IT guy comes in, fixes everything in 30 days, and now he's doing I can't print tickets, right? right? The, the other the other yeah, eleven guys, months of their 120 grand yes. like, why am I paying? You're not gonna right. subset, yeah. you can accomplish the same thing with a part-time help desk guy and then tap in. You don't need yeah. full-time engineering resources. Are you you're finding people. pushback you're from people. HR and from the executives saying, hey, look, you know, that's not what I'm looking for. I went as far as I heard somebody, yeah. now I would never do this. This is a, this is a little gauche even for me. Um, but I heard somebody saying, yeah, I went and I, I yeah, but I was like, that's not possible. Um, but I heard somebody saying, yeah, I went and actually applied for the position. And then when I got to the interview, I started yes. pitching. I'm like, yeah. wow, that's, that's so, rough. <laughs> so, take, so take that. And even if, even if they don't want to hire, you know, they won't, they won't, they don't want to listen to us for the director of infrastructure. So this is an actual client of ours. That's just doing the Microsoft licensing. I said, Hey, I used to be a recruiter. I can help you find your next it person. We knew they were paying that person 150 grand. He's like, no, I'm going to find it on my own. Now that guy is, is calling us for help. So even though we didn't, you know, get the co-managed piece with them right out of the gate. Now we've got the guy that's in there. That's been in there 60 days. And again, I'll keep it PG-13. He called us yesterday and said, holy F, this is a mess. We're like, hey, guess what we can help you out with? He Surprise. goes, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> Surprise. So now, now we just we just pivoted and targeted from a different angle. And that's we're, – we're not dead. We just followed up 30 days after he got in there because guess what? We know he's going to pivot out of there in six months because he's going to be doing printer tickets. He's making 120 grand doing printer tickets. That's not going to last long. So, and it's yeah. just so unnecessary. Uh, it's we're, we're got, it's we're, hilarious. Yeah, we're, awesome. We're yeah. approaching it a little differently. One is that we're doing traditional marketing, so we will go and we've got a campaign now, which we're going to make some changes because COVID, I think, has screwed us up a little bit. So we identify the CEOs of companies we want to go to, and we send them a copy of my CEO's book. Okay. And we also include a letter saying, here's what the, here's what we want to teach you. And we also include a copy of this saying that if you, and it's a traditional uh, MSP push, okay? But it also yeah. says, if you would like to, for us to work with your existing internal IT, please share. And we include a similarly phrased letter that's open. It's in an envelope, but it's not sealed. So the CEO can read it. And the idea being that if they like their internal IT, they'll hand this over to them. If they don't like their internal IT, they'll say screw that and call us directly. Yeah. What's your what's your close rate on that? How many books? I'll let you know as soon as we're done doing it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. So, Dave and I are going to do the same thing with your book. We're just going to redact your name off of it, and then we'll let you know what happens yeah. in Colorado. Ray, Ray, yes. Can I get a little pr promotional here? You go and get promotional, man. Talk about my books. Go ahead. Okay. There's actually <laughs> two versions of this book. <laughs> One is I, I'm I will be and it is taking me forever. <laughs> There's a commits for MSPs.com site that's going to come up, uh, and there will be some coaching, and there will be a copy of this book available that has Simplex IT removed. So it is a general, a neutral, as well as we'll be sharing all of the marketing, the the letters, and all of that kind of fun stuff that we're using. I love that. Now, how well has this worked for us? We started this literally about two or three weeks ago. Uh, and so far, and I talked with my marketing director this morning, uh, we're having a real tough time with people getting the books for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. So if what we're going to try to do is, is we're now going to try to uh, move into a uh, situation where we're going to follow up with and use LinkedIn, where we're going to offer, hey, we sent you a book to your office. If you'd like, I'll send you the PDF copy of it in the meantime. Right. Yeah. All right. We are also doing a ton of LinkedIn work, uh, low cost, high time. So we've added about 1500 new LinkedIn connections, all either business, local business or local IT people uh, since about February. We're also for the past three weeks or so, we've been adding uh, videos. Uh, so we're adding one video a day, uh, you know, Arl Coppage or Bob Coppage, whatever I am on LinkedIn. Um, we're not selling anything. Uh, we're not marketing anything. We're just, 
Some of it's about IT, some of it's about commits, some of it's about whatever. And the whole idea is we're just building that brand. We're up to about 2,000 or so views of the videos a day, about 30 or 40 likes and comments a day. Uh, and then what we'll be doing is we'll be pivoting that uh, towards the end of August to include about every other week um, uh, uh, more marketing, more push there. And these videos are taking us about 15 to 20 minutes to script and record it and about 25 minutes or so for the people uh, who we're working with to actually edit it. Uh, and it's it's worked out all those very well. We haven't really turned those into leads or sales yet. So those are the things we're doing. Again, if you go to uh, Facebook you know, Facebook.com, go uh, join the, uh, the Comits group. Uh, there'll be some information as far as all that stuff, what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And Bob, you know, thank you so much for that. Um, you know, grab the books. I, I love that you're going to have an unbranded thing ready to go. You know, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, one of my favorite things mm -hmm. in the world, my poor staff's heard me say this a thousand times, genius sees the answer before the question, right? And, and you, you answered it before. <laughs> Corey says, we're going to go market this. And Bob's like, I got the answer for you. It's ready to go. <laughs> um, you know, it's brilliant. I love that. Um, Corey, uh, Matt, <laughs> Corey, Dave, <laughs> any uh, closing remarks you want to leave our audience with? We're just trying to learn from the uh, master over there, Bob. So, <laughs> yeah, Bob. You know, he, Bob makes a lot of jokes. He's very, um, he's very quick to even joke about himself. But and he won't, he won't ever admit this. Bob is a brilliant guy. He has a lot of awesome ideas. Um, he gives these nuggets of wisdom when he talks, um, and he doesn't beat you to death with it. So, you know, definitely somebody worth following on LinkedIn. Look at the videos. I'm a big fan. I don't know if you know this or not. I, I do quite a good number of videos and speaking engagements. So you definitely, uh, I, I definitely see the value in it. It's a good thing. We should all be doing that. We should all be building our brands. Um, follow Bob, learn from him. And I'll put the Comets uh, group link in chat as well uh, for people to join. Um, good content, but thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate having you guys. Uh, thanks for having thanks me. to all the audience. Yeah, it's and fun. Yeah. Guys, don't forget, go visit uh, 1 o'clock to 1.15. Uh, my buddy Dennis at Adept Cloud is going to be doing live demos. We're going to have li live demos throughout the day. Go visit our sponsors. Go go tell them what you want, what makes them a better vendor, uh, because that's that's important. Make them work for you. Don't, don't work for them. Uh, Send Dave an email. Send David an email, and we'll Matt we'll see him Matt. in the uh, in the next Jason Board movie trying to fit into uh, shirts from pre COVID. They already recast him. I, I'm not. I'm done with that. <laughs> you done with that? All right, uh, Bob. All right. Are you on Twitter? Simplex underscore it. There you go. Simplex underscore it on Twitter. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You have a great day. We'll see you later. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, everybody.